Hello everyone, my name is Sarah and today we are going to be making my entry for Delightful's Tropical Collaboration. Like many customizers, I admire Delightful's skill and she is a huge inspiration for me, so of course I had to join in. This custom was a challenge for me, entirely due to my lack of time. Delightful announced the collaboration at the beginning of July and we had until August 4th, so about a month, plenty of time. However, I was on vacation with my family for half of that time. I wasn't sure where to start, so I decided to do some research. I started where I often do, by defining tropical. Then I started looking through the pictures that appeared when I searched the word tropical. I also looked at tropical animals, Tropical plants. Then it hit me. The thing I like the most from the tropics is the fruit. So what better animal to make than the fruit bat? Specifically, the spear-nosed fruit bat. I love bats in general, so I was pretty excited about this idea. I mean, look at those little fuzzy faces. Claudine is the perfect doll for this custom. Her wolf ears will do perfectly as bat ears. If you're wondering where her hair went, she donated it to Orion in the last video. So all we need to do now is soak her head in boiling water until it's nice and soft. I'm going to take my pliers and plunge them into her head. Scraping them around will hopefully pull chains of plugs loose as well as the glue that holds them in place. Now I'm going to take my cleaning cloth, one side is cotton, the other is terry cloth, and soak a corner of it in 100% acetone in order to wipe off her factory face paint. It helps if you hold the cloth against the paint for a few seconds and then slowly twist, but scrubbing works too. I also removed the paint on her scalp as her new hair is going to be a very different color from the previous one. If there are any small crevices or crannies you can't get your cloth or other cleaning tools into, I'd recommend finding something somewhat pointy to press in there with. I'm using a knitting needle in this case. My next step was to mix up some new scalp paint. Didn't have any pink, so I made my own. I painted it onto her scalp using way too much on the brush. Anytime I pushed the paint past the area that would be rerouted, I touched it up using acetone. Next came the reroute. Now, this is the first time you've seen me reroute on this channel, but this is actually my second reroute. Sometimes, the order that I make dolls in gets shuffled around when it comes time to make their videos. The first section I did was the hairline, making sure to sprinkle some orange in with the pink throughout. The hair I'm using is left over from the Gigi Grant doll I used to make my Susie. Then I did the part, and then the hairlines around her ears. While placing the orange strands, I tried to put them in places where they would be easily visible once her hair was styled. I'm proud to say I only broke one needle this time. Finally then, I filled in the rest of her hair. I had a little hair left over in the end. I suppose that's the hair that would have been plugged where her ears are. To seal the hair plugs into the head, I used some of the Doll Planet's Galaxy Glue. To spread out the glue, I used the blunt end of a chopstick. 
It's important that the glue is spread all over the inside of the head so all of the plugs are sealed in. Getting ready for the face up, I pinned a piece of cloth to her hairline. I did give her face a layer of my preferred sealant, Liquitex Matte Varnish at this point, but I didn't really need to. You'll see why in a second. Anyway, this is a good example of how I apply sealant to my doll. This type of fruit bat has a large pointed nose that stands up in front of their faces. I covered her face with aluminum foil so that I could remove the nose. The reason I needed to be able to remove it was that I wanted to use polymer clay for most of it. I made sure to press the foil into the creases of her face so it was accurate to the sculpt underneath. I created the basic triangular shape of the nose before adding the grooves to it to make the nostrils. Again, I mostly used a double pointed knitting needle, size US3, to help shape and smooth the clay. Once I had the shape I wanted, I untaped and removed the foil. While I had the clay out, I decided to make some fruits for her, mostly out of frame of the camera, apparently. I mean, she is a fruit bat after all. Then I baked everything per the package's instructions. Once they were cool, I painted the fruit. The nose I did my best to pop off of the foil. I spent some time moving it around slightly, deciding exactly where on her face I wanted it, I also shaved it down in a few places with my X-Acto knife. I wanted her natural nose to still be visible, like the grooves in the bat part of the nose are more for catching scents than actual smelling. I trimmed and smoothed the back of the nose as well. I fixed it to her face then with super glue. Once it's on, it's very obvious that there are some gaps and holes. Not exactly a smooth transition. 
So to fill that in, I grabbed my DOS air dry clay and got to work. I did my best to make her human nose integrate into the bat part in a way that still looks somewhat functional, if not realistic. Again, I used the same knitting needle for details and smoothing. Then I cleaned up the area with a makeup applicator and acetone, effectively wiping off the coat of sealant from before. Once dry, to keep the clay from cracking, I spread this Loctite flexible adhesive glue all over the parts where the clay met the plastic, especially the air dry clay. This stuff is super effective and strong, but it also has some very strong fumes. So if you do decide to use it, be sure to do so in a well-ventilated area. Always know the risks and take proper precautions with every tool or substance you work with. Now it was time for her first proper coat of sealant. I did my best to get it all around the nose, even in between it and the forehead. I did my best to mix up an acrylic paint that would be somewhat close to her skin tone, but it took a little trial and error. Once I was satisfied, I painted her whole nose. It's not an exact match, but that doesn't really matter in this case. At this point, I reattached her head to her body, silently praying to whichever god oversees doll customization that her face wouldn't crack. I put on a layer of brown pastels before going to the dark grays. These fruit bats seem to have a darker nose compared to the rest of their fur, so that was the look I was attempting to emulate. I took several coats of chalk pastel and sealant, but eventually I got a nice smooth color. All the first few layers did was emphasize any bumps or imperfections, not to mention it made it look grimy. I used a nice bright pink pastel that turned into a fruity fuchsia when the sealant was applied. So I promise her lips look less gross in the end. As per usual, I used a kneaded eraser to clean up where I had spread the pastels too far in order to create a neat edge for the color. This custom was my first chance to try out my new thinner brushes. I've been struggling to make nice neat thin lines, so I was hoping these would help. No, I'm not sponsored though. I have to say, I did feel like I had a lot more control over the paint with these brushes, especially when doing the eyes. My eyelashes and waterline still need some practice. To be honest, I was kind of hoping the brushes would magically make me better at painting eyelashes, but it certainly wasn't the case. Better tools do help, but practice is an essential step. Bat's eyes are completely black, so to integrate this look into a more human style, I gave her very dark gray irises which were very large and it left only a tiny bit of the whites visible. To add some color variation to them, I added slightly gray lighter streaks like is typical in a human eye and then painted the black pupils on top of them. Eyeliner was next. I think that's the best, if not the first, cat eye I've ever done. Then there was the eyeshadow. I decided on green, which is pretty hard to see after the sealant is applied, but I think the subtle look works for a Batgirl who is flying through the jungle at night. 
This was my first time creating eyeshadow for a doll. And I don't wear makeup myself, aside from the occasional lipstick. So I felt pretty intimidated by it. The same goes for contouring. When the sealant on her face was drying, I decided to work on her clothes. For her eyebrows, I decided to try a look that I really like on other customs, a gradient. I started with orange and morphed into a fuchsia that went well with her hair color. Yeah, she looks a mess here. I removed her eyebrows and some of the contouring on her cheeks that got too dark and redid them. The color change on her cheeks was more extreme, so I had a hard time getting a lighter color to blend into what was already there, but I think I managed it in the end. Anyway, back to her clothes. I decided to make the shirt out of this great pink fabric. I ended up hand sewing all of her clothes because I can't use my sewing machine and have my air conditioning on at the same time without blowing up fuse. And if you're in the US right now, you probably know why I chose the AC over my sewing machine. The first pair of pants I made were way too big, even though I attempted to size down the male pattern I was using a lot. I didn't like them in black either, so I had to start those over. Now, switching locations to my mom's house, the first part of that vacation I mentioned, I started on her wings. I based the pattern off of the wings for my Mavis doll from the movie Hotel Transylvania. I cut them out of some dark brown cotton and marked where the arm straps would go, again, based off of Mavis's wings. I tried out a new fray check. It worked about the same as my other kind. I used 0.5 millimeter clear elastic cord that is used for jewelry making, I believe, for her arm straps. I didn't want them to be visible since the wings are supposed to be part of her body. I used a needle to make a loop of elastic on one side of the fabric before knotting it on the other. I used a little super glue on each knot to keep them from unraveling, since that's a problem I've had in the past. I sewed around the edge, leaving a hole to turn the fabric. The elastic loops are on the inside of the seam, so they're closer to the center of the piece than the seam is. Once the piece was fully turned right side out, I closed the hole with a ladder stitch and made sure the loops were all pulled out fully, and then top stitched the wings inside the loops, so closer to the center. The last step was to add the bones in her wings. I marked out where I wanted them and then embroidered them on using a lighter brown color of embroidery thread. In real life, these would be the bat's fingers, but they kind of come off of my girl's wrists. To make the belt that will hold her bag of fruit, I braided three faux leather cords together and sewed the ends shut. I wanted her to have a bag for her fruit but I wanted the fruit to be visible too. So mesh it was. Where did she get the mesh? Maybe she stole some, 
Maybe she stole some mosquito netting from some hikers. I loosely sewed a pink piece of embroidery thread where I wanted the opening to be, to make a sort of drawstring pouch. While I knot the cords at the ends and tie the bag, let's talk about her fruit. She has two bananas, a kiwi, a mango, and a papaya, with bites out of both. Two coffee cherries, a chirimoya, I don't know what it's called in English, a fig, and a cashew fruit. I made two loops that you can slip the belt through to hold the bag. The last part, still at my mom's house, but outside this time, was to make her shoes. I waffled for a while about whether she should have shoes or not. She's a creature of the wilds, but she seemed unbalanced and unfinished without them. So in the end, I decided to give her shoes made out of leaves. I follow the instructions for the shoes Delightful made for her Amanita doll, but I think I cut out the pieces it felt too small, so I had to improvise a bit. I could have done the stitching a bit neater as well, but I wanted them to have a more of a scavenged look about them. Like they were made on the fly one day. Fly, get it, cause she's a bat. <sighs> Never mind. I love this doll, and I had so much fun participating in a collaboration with so many people. I've met a lot of new customizers and doll lovers, which is always good. This doll wasn't too technically challenging. She was one of those rare instances where everything seemed to just go right, which is good since this custom was a race against the clock. On the way to the beach with my family, we stopped at a fruit stand to buy some watermelon and other goodies. I was able to get a few pictures of her with some gigantic fruit. I call this one her holy watermelons pose. I don't think she's flying away with any of these. 
I still don't have a name for her, so if you have any ideas, let me know. Once she had eaten her fill, I mean, we had gotten enough pictures, we headed to the beach. That's it for this custom. I hope you all enjoyed, and thank you for watching. Remember, if you want a chance to be featured in my upcoming series, share an idea for a custom in the comments below any of my videos. I hope you're all having a good morning, afternoon, weekend, whatever it is, I hope it's a good one. Bye!